Hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm Isabella. I'm an international student from China. And my Chinese name is Xiao Jing Xiong. And in China, we say the last name before the first name, so Xiong Xiao Jing. I spent seven years of school in China and transferred to Singapore for eighth and half of the ninth grade. Then I applied to schools in California, hoping to come to the US to study. I joined Oak Grove as a sophomore, so this is my third year at Oak Grove. I put three questions up there. Why Singapore? Why the US? And why Oak Grove? Coming to the US for high school has always been my dream. When I went to seventh grade in China and started doing homework four hours a day, having tutoring all the time just to get into top 10 places in my school. I knew this was not what I wanted to do. I wanted a school life with more choices, fun activities, a more encouraging way of teaching and learning, and the U.S. seems to be the best fit for that. Plus, I always wanted to come to the U.S. for college, so I think it will be beneficial to start a high school in the same country. I did not come straight to the U.S. because it was too far away from home and my parents were worried. In the meantime, I had a cousin studying in Singapore, and my parents felt safer sending me there. Singapore is also a great um, um, English-speaking country with a great educational system. So I spent a, half, a year and a half in Singapore and knew it was still not the place for me. My dream of coming to the US to study was more determined rather than diminished. And I told my parents I was transferring no matter what. <laughs> so I started looking up schools online, and the way I found Oak Grove was pretty Asian. I looked up top 100 private schools in California, <laughs> went down the list, and found schools that matched my English standards at that time, and just applied. I was admitted to Oak Grove School, Midland School, which is two hours away from here, and two other schools in Los Angeles. My parents came to the U.S. just to visit these schools for me, which I really appreciate. I was studying in Singapore back then, so I couldn't come. My parents said the two schools in Los Angeles were similar to the schools I attended in China and Singapore, and they were not cold hard enough to send their daughter to Midland to chop her own firewood. <laughs> <laughs> so Oprah was the best choice. My dad said it would be good to experience a different type of school rather than just attending all of the most competitive schools. He believed I would get more life skills and be more open-minded attending a school like Oak Grove after his visit. Thinking back, my dad was wise making this decision and I was wise trusting him. Time flies and here I am presenting my gateway, cherishing my last few days left at Oak Grove. That was a picture of me baking in my school in Singapore. That was my first time. First year studying abroad, I was 14. The first art I want to talk about is the art of inquiry. This art means the ability to question myself and be more open-minded to different options and potentials. The essential question I chose was, how has high school influenced my worldview? Now I want to talk about backpacking trip for this art. <laughs> I was very dependent on the indoor spaces and was afraid of the young and outside. So when I was forced to go on this backpacking trip, I was nervous and terrified. Every pre-departure instruction and reminder sounded like potential dangers to me. <laughs> Never even hiked before, not to mention hiking with a heavy backpack, the possibilities of encountering snakes, bears, and poison oak. I complained to my parents, what kind of school throws their students in the wild for six days? <laughs> <laughs> it turned out to be a very tough trip for me. My class works crazily fast, and I was 30 minutes behind the whole group the first day. I was walking on this narrow trail, and the mountain was by my right side, and the cliff was just on my left side. I was and still am afraid of heights. The strong wind blew into my face, and even one breath was a struggle for me. Literally, I felt the more steps I took, the closer I was to death. <laughs> Poor Kevin has to walk behind me, because we have to have one chaperone with the last student. And I was so focused on the ground, not noticing any of the surroundings. So I cannot remember how many times Kevin was slammed right in the face by the branches I passed. <laughs> the first day was a disaster, and I was desperate. 
It was not until the second to last day when my body slowly adapted to the intense walking and I could finally catch up with my team. Chatting and joking with them, feeling like I finally became part of this group. I was very proud to tell my parents about the trip when I came back safe and sound. I couldn't believe I had made it through. My work being was greatly influenced by this trip. I realized being in nature is not too bad, and you never know how much potential you have until you are more willing to push yourself and be more open-minded. So I have a photo up there it was us on top of the mountain, and the picture below was, I think, on Thursday, when we hiked 11 miles and everyone was just half done. <laughs> <laughs> the second art is the art of caring and relationship. This art means to love and care about my own community and the bigger community beyond my life. The essential question I asked was, in what ways have I given back to the community? I had never done any community service before coming to Oak Grove. And um, I, I know I use this kind of stuff a lot. I've never hiked before. I've never played soccer before. I've never done any community service before. Oak Grove just put a lot of new experiences into my life. So anyways, I had no interest in doing community service when I, know I, when I knew I had to do 25 hours a year. I only wanted to do the hours because I have to pass advisory class and community service looks good on college applications. However, the first community service was surprisingly interesting to me. I went to this shelter for homeless people in Oxnard with the dorm with Besson House and we served food there for three hours. It was tiring, but when I saw smiles on their faces and when they said thank you to me every single time, I felt so content. For the first time, I seemed to find meaning in my life to understand I can make others really happy. Serving food is not a big deal to me, but having a hot meal means a lot to the homeless people. That was the first time I had the opportunity to give back, and I felt so relieved. I don't just take in anymore. I can give back in my own way with my limited ability. Before then, I had thought about giving back as making huge monetary donations, and I couldn't do that until I started making money. But after that, I realized anyone can give back anytime as long as they want to. I actually thought about going back to that shelter or do something similar after that first community service, and that idea shocked me. I asked to do more of something I originally had no interest in. I realized my view was changing since then. Other opportunities came to me, and I want to share this particular one with you. My dad supports two minority schools in a remote place in Linsang City, Yunnan Province, China, and he has visited there several times. But whenever he asked me to go with him, I always chose to do something instead. After that first community service in Oxnard, I talked with my dad about going to this school and we made it happen. My mom went with me. We flew two hours from my hometown to the capital of Yunnan province, flew another hour from the capital to Lintang city, and drove another three hours to get to the school. The schools were kind of isolated in the mountain and it was hard getting in and out. When I got there, I was shocked at how poor the condition was. The kids there wear the exact same clothes for days, and they only have three to five outfits to change their whole life. My dad designed and bought uniforms for them the first year he went, and this is their uniform. Orange and white, pretty classic and simple, but it, the kids thought that was the most beautiful clothes they've ever had. The teacher there told me the kids wear the uniforms Monday to Friday, go home during weekends to wash them, and wear them again the next Monday that they come to school. This is their school, pretty different from most US schools, I think. We have tall buildings, several stories, and multiple classrooms in each story. Usually there's a statue in the middle of somewhere. This is their classroom. Wooden desks and chairs, cement floor, simple white. A uh, blackboard. This is their dorm. I don't think any business students can complain about their living condition after seeing this. This is a room of 10 people. They live in bunk beds and they put all their towers and toothbrushes on that one shelf, all their sleepers under the bed, and this is where they live for years. This was me talking on stage, sharing my stories in Singapore, in the US, and in other parts of China with them. Most of the kids have never stepped out of the mountain and had no idea what the outside world looked like. 
So I was just trying to let them know how beautiful and interesting the outside world is, hoping to inspire them to come out as well. And look at how many notes and papers they have on each of their desks. This was them performing their traditional dancing to me, and they were already talented kids. This was part of the 100 million photos I took with the kids there. They were really excited to see people coming from outside, sharing stories with them. Everyone wanted to take pictures with me, and I couldn't say no. So I took literally like 100 photos at that exact same place in the afternoon. This was another surprise I had during this community service trip. He's an American teacher teaching in Mississippi, and his name is Andrew. He found this school through an US organization called Teach for China. He just went there and stayed there for two years. He taught English in the school, but he only started learning Chinese when he went to China. And he lived in a faculty dorm. He ate their local food. The local food was even hard for me to eat, but he enjoyed the food a lot. And he even drank their alcohol. I think, and the most surprising thing is, he picked a Chinese last name for himself, and he has the exact same Chinese last name with me. My last name, Xiong, X-I-O-N-G, is not a common last name at all. And I wondered how Andrew picked Xiong as his last name among all other common Chinese last names. Andrew said because Xiong means bear or panda in Chinese, he thinks it is cute and he represents some Chinese element. <laughs> <laughs> I was touched by this beautiful coincidence, and I think it is very courageous and caring of Andrew to come to this isolated place in the middle of nowhere and stay here for two years. So coming back from this trip, I remember joking around with my friend during lunch at Oak Grove, saying, don't waste food, kids in Africa have nothing to eat. But how many of us have actually been to Africa and are willing to go and help the kids there? Giving back is always something easier to say than do. And I was one of the persons who talk about giving back all the time, but who is also the first person to quit. So I'm glad I took this step forward this time, helping out for my heart, not just to make my college applications look better. Community service gives me the chance to have a closer connection with the world and know more about the society I live in, which in turn makes me cherish and appreciate more of what I have. The third art is the art of academia. I wasn't going to talk about this art until I found out this is a mandatory art and the only mandatory art. <laughs> <laughs> this art originally means to have good grades, be the top rank of my class, and to go to a good college. After coming to Oak Grove, the art of academia mean, means something other than grades to me. It means a wider range of different options, and you're supported no matter which path you pick. The essential question I chose was, how has Oak Grove supported me in my academic goals? As I said, I attended very competitive schools in China and Singapore. I learned, I danced for five years when I was young and started playing piano at the age of four and a half. But once I went into seventh grade, I had to give up all of these because I just had too much homework. When I went to Singapore, I picked up on piano a little bit. We had a, a music class and we played music once a week for only an hour. However, Oak Grove has music electives three to four times a week, and teachers are so supportive of my love of music. The Steinway here is usually loved, but when I told Jody and Eric, the music teacher that I wanted to play during weekends, they immediately agreed and figured out a plan for me. When I lived at Besant House, they had house parents come up with me every time I played. So thank you, house parents. And when I moved out of the dorm and became a day student this year, Eric just gave me the key to the Steinway. I really appreciate the trust and the support of our group teachers. I had so much fun playing piano during the weekends, and I'm really happy that I can finally have a decent academic achievement while keep doing what I love at the same time. This is a comment from Eric. Uh, Isabel continues to excel in music this semester by challenging herself in new ways. After showing advanced skills on the keys last year, she surprised the class and maybe herself by becoming a highly proficient drummer in a matter of weeks. So as Eric said, I played piano for two years for my music group, but last semester, my first semester senior year, I decided not to play any more piano. I learned a new instrument, I played drum, and I played three drum songs, but unfortunately never had a chance to perform because of the fire.
The last art I want to talk about is the art of aesthetics. This art means to find beauty and appreciate beauty in nature to me. When I was in elementary school, someone asked me a would you rather question. Would you rather be inside or outside if you could only choose one for your whole life? I answered inside with no hesitation. As I mentioned in my first art, I was afraid and uncomfortable being in nature. And before coming to Oak Grove, I imagined Oak Grove to be just the same as all my other schools with tall buildings, indoor canteen, a nice gym, and so on and so forth. But in reality, <laughs> there are only a few wooden um, houses and a gazebo that is freezing in winters. But I was amazed by the campus the first day I came here for new student orientation. Green grasses and pretty flowers everywhere. I saw oak leaves swing in the wind, and I heard children screaming on the slides and swings. When was the last time I saw a swim? Probably when I was in kindergarten. Ogre suddenly brings me back to an original point where I found a carefree me singing and swinging in the dusk. From that point on, I think I realized the beauty of nature again. And I, the essential question I chose was, in what ways has high school helped you discover and appreciate beauty? I had two things to talk about. The first thing is the El Cap camping trip. One thing I'll never forget about the El Cap camping trip is a night full of stars. I never expected myself to sleep outside, but the stars were so incredible that I slept outside for all five nights. Coming from a country that is constantly bothered with haze, it's a luxury for us to see a sunny day, not to mention a dark night full of stars. The second thing is how a group likes to bring classes outside. I remember journaling under a big oak tree under the 10 a.m. sun. Hearing birds sing, watching rabbits running, and writing these down in my journal. It was quiet, peaceful, and beautiful. The warm breeze always calms me down and gives me an escape from the outside world. Gradually, I came to enjoy being outside. I would bring a book to read on a Saturday afternoon rather than staying in my room. My phone is full of pictures off the canvas rather than all my selfies. <laughs> I also, personally, I also love traveling a lot. And before coming to Oak Grove, traveling means staying in a five-star hotel, eating in fancy restaurants, and visiting historical sites. But now, traveling means sitting by the window of a nice coffee shop, wandering on the street, or spending an afternoon in a botanic garden. The more I appreciate nature, the more happiness and meaning I find in my life, and this is where Oak Grove has shaped me the most. Moving on to Pathos Project. My first idea of Pass's project was to go to my cousin's restaurant in Canada and help out in his restaurant. But my visa didn't work out. And I talked, about, I talked with a person from Ojai Valley Inn trying to intern at their hotel because I'm always interested in hotel management. But they, never, they have never done anything similar before, so they said no. Then I thought about my favorite thing all my life, music. As I said, I started playing piano from Four, four, four years old, and I learned how to read sheet music at the age of five. But it was always so fascinating to watch pianists just playing whatever they want without the sheet music. And most of the time, the music sounds more alive and vivid. So I wanted to learn improvisation, and I talked with the music teacher, Eric. We decided to improvise on Perfect by Ed Sheeran. It was a lot harder and challenging as I expected. I was trained to play in a certain way, and suddenly there were no rules. I follow a strict tempo when I play classical pieces, but once I start improvising, I lost the tempo and messed up the whole song. I made millions of different recordings, as you can see from the screenshot perfect, one, two, three, four, five, six, chorus, pre-chorus, intro, outro, and I wasn't satisfied with any of those. And by the end of this project, when I was trying to come up with a complete song, I had trouble putting a song together. Just playing a song smoothly from the top to the end, no matter how many times I tried. So in the end, I used iMovie to put my recordings together. So the recordings you will hear later on has been edited with iMovie. This is a sheet when I was trying to write down the melody of perfect. I used numbers instead of music notes, so it's easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven represents C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Something I learned when I was young, and it was really helpful with this project. So although hard, I was glad to, I was glad I could do something I love with those ten days. 
it would, it, I spent an average of two to three hours um, on the piano in this room trying to figure out the music, and it got frustrating and boring sometimes. I met with Eric several times, and Eric was really helpful, teaching me the basic structure of improvisation, he, and he was very encouraging no matter how I played and what I played. Eric gave me a lot of confidence, and I could not have done this without him. Surprisingly, this project has also influenced me to find purpose in my life. I'm a person who follows the rules all the time, who always wants to know the exact plans and expectations, and things become hard to me once they get a bit loose. I think learning to jump out of the box and think creatively is also an important life skill, and I have to work on that just as, as much as I have to work on my improvisation. I did this in 10 days, although I improvised on perfect, it's not perfect at all. Northeastern University next year. 
It was a challenge applying to colleges, and the result was not as good as expected. Northeastern was not my dream school, but was definitely one of my top choices. I'm going to the DeMont McKim School of Business, majoring in entrepreneurship and innovation. I was also admitted into the NU Inc. program, a first semester studying a pro abroad program in your freshman year. And here are the choices. Australia, Canada, China, Czech Republic, England, Germany, Greece, Ireland, and Italy. It was a lot of choices. And to be honest, I actually thought about going back to China. Because <laughs> it, it will be going abroad for US students, but it's going home for me. But then I thought it might be too boring to go back to China. And I always wanted to visit Europe, and Greece is definitely on my top list of European countries, so I choose Greece instead. I'll be spending my first semester freshman year in Greece from this September to December, and I'll go back to the Boston campus where the school actually is next January. Other than the NU Inc. program, Northeastern also has a great co-op internship programs. And especially for business students, we have to have two internship programs. Uh, we have to do two internships in order to graduate. Northeastern works with over 600 companies nationwide and overseas, and I think these are going to be eye-opening experiences for me. The last reason I chose Northeastern among all my other schools was its location. Boston is a great place to study with so many fabulous universities around. And it is like a perfect size between Ventura and New York, where you get enough opportunities but escaping from the intense city life. The only thing I'm super worried about is the weather there especially stayed in California for three years. I feel sad not seeing the sun for one day. Can't imagine snowing for four months. <laughs> Final summary. Three more minutes and we're all out of here. <laughs> My final picture is this photo we took just a month ago. I'm so fortunate to be in this lovely class of 10, and I think it is such a kind and tolerant class. We made through so many trips together, backpacking trips, southwest trip, India, and to be honest, there were never big conflicts or fights. We helped each other out and supported each other through the hard times. I'll definitely miss this class a lot when I leave, and I really hope we can keep in touch after graduation. I know most classes, most people lose contact once they graduate and separate, but I sincerely wish our class will not be one of them. So this is my gateway. Thank you so much. what's going to happen, was, I'm still willing to try. So I think that definitely helped me to be more ready in the, in the real world society. Any more questions? Meredith. Will Yeah, definitely. So, Northeastern works with an uh, like international American college in Thessaloniki, Greece, which is I think the second biggest city in Greece. We'll be going to regular classes in Greece, and all our like we can transfer all our credits when we get back into Northeastern. 
So it's not a separate program. We're doing the exact same courses and classes Northeastern students are taking just in a different country. Well. I have a question. So when you were standing in front of all those kids in that school in China and telling them about your school, what sort of, how did you describe it? What were, what were the <laughs> well, I shared them. I shared a lot of photos and videos with them so they can have a straightforward idea. I talk about a bunch of good stuff about Oak Grove. <laughs> Just telling them how different the world is outside their own little space and outside the mountain. Shared lots of photos and videos with them. And, yeah. Oh, wait, one more question. Are you going to play music at all, you think, in the future? Do you think that will still be a part of your life? Definitely, I think I'll try to. And Eric told me I can take uh, I can take classes maybe in what's that school called? Bur the, Berkeley College of Music. Yeah, Berkeley College of Music. And I think Northeastern has music uh, clubs for sure. So I'll definitely keep playing piano and drum and hoping to learn guitar in the future. Patrick. Hi, I have a question. Um, so you spoke about how Oak Grove kind of brought this um, newfound vision to like being in the outdoors and like loving nature. It's like part of yourself. How do you um, actively plan on continuing that when you're moving to a big city like Boston and you're getting involved in like going to college and being stuck in classrooms all the time? Like how are you going to actively engage yourself to like continue to explore the outer world? Well, I think um, Boston itself has really good public transportation and instead of like taking cars to everywhere, I might choose to walk instead or like take like subways and stuff just to enjoy and explore more in the city and same thing when I go to Greece I'm, I'll, I'll definitely try to go to other, some other countries close by other than just Greece and I think I'll definitely spend more time outside exploring the city rather than staying in my room watching Netflix. <laughs>